Welcome back. This is the fourth video in the set of Microfocus CICS Web Service Provider from WSDL demonstration videos. In this video, I'll create and configure a new enterprise server region to host the reverse CICS web service and stand ready to process SOAP requests. I'll create the new enterprise server region from the Server Explorer in Visual Studio. Usually, the Server Explorer is visible in a collapsed form on the left of the Visual Studio interface. Just click here to expand it. On the Server Explorer, under Microfocus Servers, right-click Localhost and select New Enterprise Server. I'm naming the new Enterprise Server region CWS Demo. For this demo, Microfocus provides a CICS Web Services template to use when creating the region. I'll click the Browse button associated with the Template field. Here is the template, CICS Web Services template.xml. I'll just double-click to select it. On the Associate with Projects list, I'll check the Reverse Project and click OK. After a few seconds, the list of Enterprise Server regions in the Server Explorer refreshes and shows the new CWS demo region. The process I've just used to create the CWS demo region and that is starting from the Server Explorer in Enterprise Developer, using a template supplied by Microfocus, and associating the new region with an existing project, enables Enterprise Server to preset several points of configuration as it creates the new region. I'll show you some of these in context later in this video. At this point, I want to provide a more detailed explanation of one of the preset configuration points, which is an enterprise server environment variable named IDE LoadLib. The value of IDE LoadLib is derived from the output path property set in the associated enterprise developer project. When I set the output path for the reverse project, I specified dot backslash LoadLib, with the dot representing the current or the project directory, and the backslash LoadLib to specify a project subdirectory. In this case, the new CWS demo region has the IDE load live variable set to C colon backslash demos backslash reverse, which is the project directory, backslash load live. Once set, an enterprise server environment variable can be used to define additional environment variables and to provide other configuration values. When referencing an environment variable in enterprise server, you precede the name of the variable with a dollar sign. As I walk you through the additional configuration tasks required to prep the CWS demo region to run the web service, I'll show you some examples where environment variables are referenced in this manner. The additional configuration I need to do for the new region requires that it is in started mode, so I'll start up CWS demo from the Server Explorer in Enterprise Developer. I'll right-click CWS demo and then select Start from the Context menu. The Output window shows the progression of the Start process, and back in the Server Explorer, you can see by the green icon that the CWS Demo Enterprise Server region is now started. To get into the configuration area for this region, I need to start the Enterprise Server Administration IDE, which I can also do from the Server Explorer. I'll right-click Microfocus Servers Then click Administration. The Enterprise Server Administration homepage appears in a new window in Visual Studio. Here is the entry for the new CWS Demo Enterprise Server region. I'll click the Edit button for CWS Demo, and the first page that comes up is the Server Properties General tab. The Configuration Information field on this tab contains several preset environment variables. Missing from this list, however, is the definition for IDE LoadLib, and that's because IDE LoadLib is a default system setting. The preset IDE Project LOC environment variable is defined here in part by referencing the IDE LoadLib variable, as you can see by the name of the variable preceded by a dollar sign. 
In addition to the project location, there are definitions for several environment variables that each identify a key path used by the reverse project, including the location of the WSDL file, system files, and XML files. Later in this video, I'm going to reference some of these environment variables to set other values in the configuration. Now I need to define and install some additional resources that are specific to the reverse web service. The Enterprise Server Monitor and Control Utility, or ESMAC for short, is where this is done. ESMAC is available only when the region is in started mode, as it is now. To access the ESMAC utility, I'll click the Server Control tab, and then click ES Monitor and Control. To configure resources, I'll click the Resources drop-down on the ESMAC menu ribbon and set it to By Group. This enables the Groups button. Then I'll click Groups to see a list of currently defined resource groups. Most of these are basic resources required to run any enterprise server region, but the DFH Web and DFH Pipe groups are specific to CICS web services in general. The new resources I'm going to add are specific to the reverse CICS web service, so I'm going to create a new resource group in which to define them. To do that, I'll click New. In the Name field, I'll type a name for the new group, which I'm calling CWSREV. For the description, I'll use Reverse CICS Web Service Resources, and then click Add. This invokes the CICS group CWS Rev page. First, I'll define and install the TCPIP resource. This resource tells Enterprise Server what port number to listen on for SOAP requests. I'll click TCP IPSV, give it a name of REV TCP IP, and a description of reverse TCP IP service. You might remember in a previous video, I showed you the contents of the original WSDL file where you saw that the port number defined for the SOAP address was 5482. I need to specify the same port number here. So I'll type 5482 into the port number field and then click Add. Enterprise Server returns Add Successful. I want this resource to load and become available to the region immediately. So to make this happen, I'll click Install. The message field shows now that the TCP IP service has been installed. So it's now loaded, which means that port 5482 is open and listening for requests. I have one more resource to define, so I'll back up to the CWS Rev page and define and install the pipeline resource. The pipeline resource tells Enterprise Server the name and location of a SOAP configuration file needed for reference, and also where to find the runtime components for the web service. I'll click Pipeline, give it a name and a description, RevPipe, and Reverse Pipeline. In the Config File field, I'll specify the path and file name of an IBM SOAP provider pipeline configuration file. You can download a pipeline configuration file from the IBM website. Before starting this demo, I downloaded basicsoap11provider.xml and copied it into the XML subdirectory of the reverse project. The predefined IDE XML LOC environment variable points to that very location, so I'll use it here. In the Web Service Directory field, I want to point to the directory that contains the Web Service Runtime components, which are in the Project's Output folder, which is represented by the IDE Load Live environment variable, and click Add. Enterprise Server returns Add Successful. Once again, I want to load this resource immediately, so I'll click Install. And here we see that the pipeline has now been installed. The CWS demo region is now ready to receive and process SOAP requests. However, if I were to stop the region from this current state and then restart it, 
the resources I've just defined and installed would not load. I would have to reinstall them after starting the region. To avoid having to manually install these resources every time I start the region, I can add their resource group to the region's startup list. To do this, I need to access the startup lists available in Enterprise Server and edit the startup list associated with the CWS demo region. Resources defined in the startup list load automatically as the region starts up. I'll click the Startup button on the ESMAC ribbon. And now in the right pane, you see a list of startup lists available with Enterprise Server. The template I use to create the CWS demo region uses the Demo Start startup list, which is the default. To edit it, I'll click the Details button that corresponds to Demo Start. To add the CWS Rev resource group to this list, I'll scroll down to the end and into this empty field at the bottom, I'll type CWS Rev and then click Apply. And ESMAC adds the group to the list. With this region completely configured and running, I want to show you some of the other resources that were pre-configured when the region was created and that are actively running on the region. On the ESMAC ribbon under Resources, I'll click Active. And then Web Service. See here that the name of the web service is Reverse. Note also that Enterprise Server has generated a URI map ID value that points to the URI map resource. To see the definition of the URI map resource, I'll click URI map. And you can see that the ID matches that referenced by the web service resource. Also, the path defined here matches the path specified in the WSDL SOAP address, which in turn identifies the reverse CICS provider application. I'm now done with Enterprise Server Administration, so I'll close the IDE. In the next video, I'll test the web service using a SOAP requester to send and receive SOAP messages.